Welcome to Talk with Mama Yah, bringing you truth, love, joy, happiness, peace, self-awareness on Truth Uncompromised Media Network. Good evening. This is Mama Yah, and I am a survivor of the hurricane, Irma, that swept through the Caribbean, really doing destruction in Barbuda, St. Martin, in the Virgin Islands, Cuba, tore up the Keys in Florida, did a lot of destruction right here in Broward and Palm Beach counties, and it it was rough. It was rough, but we survived and didn't have electricity for 36 hours. So my biggest problem was being warm, but other people have not gotten uh, electricity since Sunday, and this is Wednesday. So anyway, I welcome you all here, and I trust that you're safe and sound. We are discussing initiation by Elizabeth Hayes, and we're going to start tonight with Chapter 16, Struggle for Light. So, first, I need to say that we are in initiation every day of our lives. We're initiated to yet a higher level. It's the way that we look at it. You may meet someone who initiates you into a higher way of thinking or a better way of acting towards your fellow person. According to Epictetus, things are never bad. It's the way you think about them. Well, I would be concerned considering how the survivors of Hurricanes Katrina, Harvey, and Irma may beg to differ in New Orleans, Houston, Barbuda, St. Martin, the Florida Keys, and Naples, Florida right now. I would be wondering how the people that were affected by the 8.2 earthquake in the south of Mexico and the people that survived the flooding in Sierra Leone in India and lost thousands of lives of family members and friends in those countries. But Elizabeth Hayes explains the importance of quieting the mind and living where you are. Right now, there are millions of people living in shelter around the planet. How are they feeling? And how are you feeling about them? Because what happens to one of us happens to all of us. Elizabeth meditated on what death is. She came to the conclusion that life and death alternate in an everlasting circle. Death is but the other side of life. It's just like if you have a coin, you have heads or tails. There's up and down. We live in a in a multi-dimensional world, but we basically look at it from a two-dimensional viewpoint. 
But we're moving into the fifth dimension, which means that we should be able to expand our minds to use our six senses. This week, uh, there was a very interesting program on Blog Talk Radio by Khalif Bath Nath Panea L. And I'm going to put that link into the chat room so you will be able to listen to the show that he did that was extremely interesting. I I found uh, it to be an exceptional program. Long Talk Radio. And I think that you should consider listening to Love it. Talk Radio. I, I'm trying to bring it up. So if I don't get it right now, <clears throat> I will open it up at another time. I'll put it in the chat room so that you can listen to his show on the Merkaba activation. The Merkaba is the vehicle that bodies travel in, our spiritual bodies travel in. And you should be cognizant that that the activation of that body is very important. So if you get a chance, listen to this program by Bishop Khalif. Uh, I guarantee you that you will enjoy the program. So we're discussing initiation, the book by Elizabeth Hayes. And this is the third in the series uh, of Talk with Mama Yah about this book. So as she goes on, she says, the fountain of eternal existence, human beings call it God, breathes life into man. Just as the Bible says that God breathed life into Adam's nostrils, then God inhales again, withdrawing his breath so that the empty husk falls, the body of man dies. Yet life does not cease at this moment. It clothes itself with a new body in an eternal cycle and moves on. As everything in this world lives and moves in rhythm from the orbit of the planet to the breath and pulse of every living creature. And Elizabeth spent a lot of time contemplating life itself. Contemplating reincarnation, rest periods, contemplating remembrance. And generally it is said that when children are born, up until the time they are approximately five years old, they see in the fourth and fifth dimension, they see of the spirits, and they remember who they were in past life. However, I read somewhere that we don't remember our past lives because we have too many negative memories and we would be overwhelmed by them. So, it is up, up to us to contemplate, meditate, and reconnect to the power, the powerful beings that we are. Elizabeth was having an experience with her husband, and they were 
working out a problem, and she says she saw a stream of force about three to four inches thick that flowed out of his solar plexus area, surrounded her body like a lasso, and about the height of the solar plexus. That's known as the silver cord. A lot of people studied the Archangel Michael and asked that the silver cord be severed from their children if their children are tying them down. But you can also, we're all connected with these silver cords. So if you feel that you need to break yourself from a person, that's how, that is the visualization that you do. And you should remember that most of the stories that are discussed in the Bible, in the Bhagavad Gita, in the Quran, in the Torah, they are allegory, are stories that people tell, parables that people tell to explain a certain situation. And that's why it's so important for you to quiet your mind and actually hear your the voice of your higher self, your guiding voice. Okay. The other thing that she talks about is that everything is made of molecules, but we see things as solid. Even the desk that you're sitting at, the phone that you're holding, the computer, the book that you're reading, everything is made of molecules, but they're very tight molecules, very tight. And so when you have a, a bomb explode or uh, you see a person that was shot or even cancer, this is molecules breaking up, okay? She talks about psychic vampires versus light workers. And today I posted on Facebook that um, it's very important for you to understand as you grow older, you learn to control who can enter your cipher. Yes, youth is blind to all kinds of phenomena. Age teaches you invaluable tricks to keep negative people at arm's length. Okay, so if you do run into someone that zaps your energy, you should really consider loving them from afar, okay? And so that's where contemplation, meditation, remembrance, these things come into practice because a lot of times the people who are dragging you down these are people that have been in your past lives, too. So you should constantly be on the lookout for negativ- negativity coming from other people, okay? You should be awakened. To the point that you don't let other people zap your energy, okay? So you want to be able to practice cutting the silver cord between you and those psychic vampires. And you can look all of these things up, you don't have to take my word for it. Do your own research on 
the words that you hear me say, because everything is energy. Everything is vibration. Everything is frequency. Okay? And you, you don't want to get caught up in everything being solid. Okay? Think of your life as a cycle, circle, the life death continuum. Okay? So I have someone in the queue, and I'm just going to open the mic just in case you would like to say something. Hello, 270, are you there? Okay. Hello? Hello? Are you muted? Okay, well, I'm going to leave you open, and if you decide to say something, you are welcome to say I'd like to say something. Okay, so I'll continue. Yes, so so you must be on guard to protect yourself, you know, from those around you who are not awakened to their spiritual power. Because we're all spiritual beings. We're all powerful beings. And you're being initiated right now, right this moment. You're being initiated into a higher level of understanding. Each one of us, as I talk, I am learning because earth is a classroom. And so Elizabeth says that even the person with asthma is nothing else but the invisible will of another person bearing down like a heavy weight upon the diseased individual. This invisible, unexecuted will can be that of the diseased person himself coming forth from his unconscious and causing his sickness without his knowing that his disease is indeed the result of his own will. So Elizabeth talks about the power, the will will power. You know, we talk about free will. We have free choice. Well, do you choose to live in positive expression or in negative expression? There are people who complain all the time. You know, it's too hot. It's too cold. Uh, I don't have this. I don't. They don't appreciate the thing that they already have. So that's why she says, quiet the mind and live where you are. Quiet the mind and live where you are. And as you do that, your doubts and fears will subside, much like the hurricane that, you know, the hurricane can rage for two to three hours or hours raged for 24 hours, wind, high wind, and rain. But you have to have self determination. You have to be determined that you are going to survive the storm. And this is an excellent week for this study because we have our our will has certainly been tried during this week. Those in the chat room, if you would like to ask a question or make a statement, feel free to do that, and I will relate it to the listeners. Okay, so now I'm in Chapter 17 of Initiation by Elizabeth Hayes, and she says, I take my vow, and her vow was to 
use her self-determination. Because she said that there are people, even in high positions, or people that you marry, that plunge their relatives, their surroundings, their family into ruin. Well, I, I'm not going to speak on that. I don't think at this late date I have to speak on that. But uh, it says healthy people everywhere must work together with united efforts to fight the misery that negative people, that unawakened, unenlightened people cause. Even, she says, cancer can be cured with positive thought and positive treatment. And we know this to be true. So you you must always be on guard, okay? The other thing is that as long as you are giving, you are getting, if you're trying to get, you're not giving. But it's definitely a reciprocal action. So if you're taking, eventually something is going to be taking, taking from you. So practice giving. If it's nothing but a smile, a positive thought, give that if that's all you have. But in giving, never forget yourself. Be on guard that you don't do a single thing in contradiction to the eternal laws of life. All the temptations you haven't been able to withstand so far in your life will come back to haunt you again and woe to you if you do not withstand them. She says no mortal can play with the divine forces. The divine forces. But we, in fact, are divine beings. So if you're not coming from your divinity, where are you coming from? Where is your energy founded and rooted? You should be cognizant of your words, conscious of your thoughts, because thoughts create words and action. So that is why quiet in your mind is so important. And no matter what you read, whether it's yoga or whether it's Buddhism, it's all about centering, centering, finding the quietude within your heart and your mind. So she said it would be better to go on living your personal life like other people than to fail as a co-worker, I warn you. And so you look at so many of the, the false prophets, the false preachers. Are they living what they're teaching? Is your preacher living what he or she is teaching? Because woe unto them if they are not. Okay? And if you are a preacher, beware. Because if you're misleading people, that will be taking out of, taken out of your spiritual account. Okay, chapter 18. I want to read this to you because I found it to be so important. She says, I began to investigate the source and inner motivation of all my thoughts, 
my words, my movements and deeds? What kind of unconscious power is at work within me? Where do my thoughts come from? What is it within me that wills me to say one thing or another? Why do I want to do just this thing, not something else? When I was happy about something, I investigated why I was happy about it. When I was depressed or angry, I sought out the reason for these feelings. When I felt attracted toward another person or repelled by them, I immediately analyzed myself to discover the characteristics responsible for this feeling. I kept myself under constant observation as to why I like to do some things and dislike doing others. When I was feeling talkative, I sought to find the reasons and motives behind my loquaciousness. When feeling reserved, I sought the reasons for my taciturnity. I analyzed every word that came out of my mouth to see whether it was completely true, whether it could prove hurtful to no one. That's important because the first laws of mankind were the laws of ma'at, and that is the law of do no harm. Elizabeth went on to say, I observed the effects of my words and my deeds on others around me. I constantly tried to trade places in my imagination with the person to whom I was speaking. In other words, she put herself in the other person's shoe. What would I feel if she were saying to me the words I was saying to her? Constantly, uninterruptedly, I kept myself under observation. Now, just imagine, imagine if every person did self observation more than judgment of other people. You cannot judge other people and be in control of yourself at the same time. You need to pick one. To be a free human being, Elizabeth says, means to control one's instincts and not become the slave of one's passions, desires, and wishes. So, for instance, immediately after the hurricane, I wanted ice cream. I wanted ice cream. And I really, really wanted it. But the stores were closed. But I got in my car and I rode out and I found a yogurt shop. And I had yogurt, and that sufficed. So there are ways to fulfill your passion, your desires, and your wishes exactly the way that you think it needs to be. So constantly observe your actions. Pay attention to what you're doing. Okay, so she said, I noticed that a force flowed into my nerves while I was concentrating on my work and that this force exerted a healing influence on mind and body. She said, I often received answers to philosophical, psychological, or other unsolved problems which had been occupying my mind while I was doing my work. In such cases, I would stand motionless a moment, my modeling tool in my hand, while my inward eye surveyed the new truth, the new discovery. At such moments, I felt as if my head had just poked up through the ceiling of one room 
and emerged above the floor in an upper room. And how many times have you had an awakening, an epiphany? Those are moments when your, your pineal gland is awakened. And I would again refer to the, the chat and the link for the talk by Bishop Khalif. In chapter 19, Elizabeth talks about her vision. She felt one day that she was having a heart attack. She said, I learned to know what it means to be afraid of death. Fear of death is a physical condition. She says she saw light and arms reaching out to her, and she recognized this is her savior. But then she realized she was not going to die because she still had work to do. So how many of us have been on the precipice of death and yet we were revived? How many times have you had an experience of a past life? These are questions that as you go along on your spiritual path, you will understand more and more that you are a spiritual being having a human experience rather than the other way around. So, chapter 19 is talking about her vision, and she had a dream about a witch. She wondered why do drawings and sketches of witches look just about the same? Why do human beings experience the same visions in different countries? That's a question to research. Or are we all one having the same experience? Are we human beings? Are we not also visible forms made up of various flows of force? What is reality? Are not love, hate, hope, desperation, good and evil realities too? She says the entire struggle occurred between forces and not between bodies in her vision. The force is the cause. The material body is only the effect. Have you thought about that? That your body is the result of a thought that you had in the spiritual world. The force is the cause. The material body, only the effect. Then she says, is it perfectly possible to experience complete reality in a dream? And many uh, metaphysicians have said that actually we're alive when we're dreaming and we're dead when we're in our waking hours. She says, I did not really see these beings themselves, but the hole they made in the rays of light where they were, causing complete interference with the light rays. So they were darker entities. They were not light entities. But we're moving into the fifth dimension where we are acquiring our light body. She says, I know that an invisible force radiates from my solar plexus, a force which can grow to giant strength when the person concerned really wants something with all their heart. At one time, one moment, she said, things are never bad 
she went back to what Teta said. She <laughs> says, but I'm, I must not pray to the greatest power, the creator, for personal subjective things. For he knows what is good and why. And I must not want to keep my child for short-sighted human reasons. So her child was ill, and she prayed for the will of the higher self to be done, rather than her will. Again, that's a choice. Do we choose for our will to be done or the will of the higher self? A lot of times I see my higher self as a huge genie, and I think that that genie has a peripheral vision that I don't have. So I give myself to the higher self. Generally, everything always works out fine. When the child was sick, he asked his mother not to leave him. He says, if you stay here and hold me tight, I'll forgive you for all the wrong you've done to me. This really confused her because she didn't remember that she had done him any wrong. However, later in the chapter, she explained that the child remembered his life as a man in an African setting with a hut, he even drew a hut, with a wife and children that he was protecting. So I'm concerned that perhaps Edith had been a colonialist who had done some harm to this child when he was. That may come up in chapter 20. But the child was very clear that his previous life was not where he was then. She said, this all happened several years later. My son's first memories came that summer at the lake shore when the little black beetle attracted his attention and stopped playing, and he stopped playing to watch it for a while. Without knowing it, he used an Indian method to achieve great concentration. Indian yogis do it by staring for a long time at a black spot on the wall or a crystal ball. Unknowingly, the child did the same, for the little black beetle was like a black spot, and the boy probably fell into a trance quite unintentionally. Thus, the memory of a previous incarnation came to life within him. It was a remembrance. It was deja vu. After this experience, Edith began studying with a yogi who showed her breathing exercises. I myself studied the book, The Science of Breath, by Rama Sharaka, and I learned that just by breathing, you can lower your temperature, make yourself cooler, or you can raise your temperature, make yourself warmer in the cold. So, in the art of being a mystic, becoming a light worker, you have a responsibility to, yes, help raise the vibration of other people, but you must always remember to stay true to yourself. That is most important. And if you quiet your mind, generally speaking, 
you will be able to live where you are. Now, if you go to Divine Connection Church, that WordPress.com, this evening's discussion will be there. The other thing that I wanted to bring to your attention was what will happen on September the 23rd. Ten days from now, we are supposed to experience some extraordinary happening. Well, the month has been extraordinary. It's devastating hurricane in the Gulf and in the Caribbean and in South Florida. We've had an 8.2 earthquake in Mexico, flooding in Sierra Leone and India, and thousands of people have been wiped off the face of the earth. What will September 23rd bring to planet Earth? And finally, Everyone's been talking about Revelation 12. So I'm going to read that so that it will be in this podcast. The Woman and the Dragon. A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its head. Its tail swept the third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He he was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of his testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows 
that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for a time, time and half a time, out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torment. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. Those who keep God's command and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. So, again, these are allegories. These are parable to explain happening on the planet again there are links at divine connection church dot wordpress dot com this is a blog and this is Mama Yah L on Truth Uncompromised Media Network. And I'm discussing the book Initiation by Elizabeth Hayes. This is the third part in this series. I generally do this program every other Wednesday. And today, We discussed the survivors of Hurricanes Katrina, Harvey, and Irma in New Orleans, Houston, Barbuda, St. Martin. I forgot to mention the Virgin Islands, the Florida Keys, and Naples, Florida. But all of Florida was affected, also Georgia. Jacksonville was hit. Parts of Georgia didn't have electricity for a very long time. There was an earthquake in Mexico, 8.2. Flooding in Sierra Leone and India that took the lives of thousands. Elizabeth Hayes explained the importance of quieting the mind and living where you are through contemplation, meditation, remembrance, understanding that everything is molecules and nothing is solid, that we have a silver cord that comes from our solar solar plexus, And this is how we communicate with each other. We need to know the difference between psychic vampires and light workers and be the light worker. Raise your energy, raise your vibration, raise your frequency because you're an an electric being. Understand the life-death continuum and how to protect yourself at all times by using your willpower and your free choice to magnetize the positive rather than the negative. Appreciate what you have. Use self-determination. Understand that you are a divine being. There's a difference between giving and taking. What you give, you get back. What you take is taken from you. 
Know that thoughts create words and actions. So mind and guard your thoughts. Beware of false prophets and preachers who misguide you. Use your own self-observation rather than judgment of others. Use your energy and your time to perfect yourself. Reflect on your reincarnation. And finally, what will September 23rd bring to the planet? So, my next program will be September the 27th. And we will then know what happened (laughs) on September the 23rd. September the 27th at 7 p.m. I will return and we will discuss what happened on September the 23rd. So peace and love. Thank you for listening. And go to divineconnectionchurch.wordpress.com and you will see three blog posts. This is the third one, and there's two in number one previously. We do have someone in the queue. Let me bring that person in. Good evening. Are you there? Good evening. Yes, I'm. Yes, I'm. You speaking speaking to me? me? Yes. Is this Bishop Khalid? Yeah, I I, I mixed up on the time. I'm in Central Time. And I thought the time was Central Time, but it's Eastern Time. Right. So listen, we have six minutes left. And... I have a blog called divineconnectionchurch.wordpress.com. There and in the chat room, I put the link to the show that you did about the Merkaba activation. So I'm going to give you these six minutes, so say five and a half, to talk about activating the Merkaba. Will you do that? The best that I can. Thank you, uh, Your Highness. Uh, Merkaba activation revolves around the pineal gland, or the pineal gland, of course, and the rate of motion and vibration of the pineal gland to increase our electromagnetic spectrum with or energies within our bodies. And, of course, that has a lot to do with the Eastern tradition of raising the Kundalini uh, in the Bible. It's talk, it talks about raising the serpent as a son of man, uh, as Moses lifted up the son of man so much, uh, the serpent so much the son of man be lifted up. And the seven seals in the Bible are the seven chakras. But it has to do with pineal gland activation. And since we have such short time, the pineal gland is stimulated by sunlight, direct sunlight to the retina of the eye at the right times, the frequencies and vibrations and rays that are not harmful are morning rays when the sun is orange, red, and orange, or in the sunset when it's red and orange. These rays are not harmful. So that at other times, it may damage the retina of the eye and cause irreversible eye damage. Uh, if you look at the sun when it's yellow and white um, because of the vibration and the UV rays. But now to activate the pineal gland, it requires darkness. It requires darkness, complete darkness. When the two eyes are closed, the single eye opens. By that meaning, it begins to secrete something called melanin. Now, in European culture and Western academia, whichever academia you look at in terms of the disciplines of science, they will not have the discussion about melanin. They call it melatonin. That's a cover-up, but it's melanin, the module. Melanin atoms make uh, molecules, and molecules make our cells. 
So these, this melanin that is secreted by the pineal gland comes out in darkness. In the Bible it says, when I sat in darkness there, um, a light came to me. And it says that in Isaiah 45 and 3 in the Bible, I will give you the treasures of darkness. He that dwells in a secret place, the place that secretes, which is the pineal gland, <clears throat> shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And it talks about all the pestilence in Psalm 91 that follows. None of those things shall come nigh that dwelling because of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is your force field, which is your macabre. Now, the meaning of the word macabre is three words, merkaba. Mer means rotating like ka, of course, means that inner spirit uh, that is within us, and Ba is the soul spirit that resides in us and corresponds to the Ba, which is the ancient Kemetic word for heaven. <clears throat> and so it means a vehicle, and it also means a the throne of God. It's something that takes us to our Godness. So Merkaba activation is critical because without it, we cannot reach our God selves that we are designed and we were created and came into this existence for to come into realization of our Godness that we are a God having a human experience. And that all revolves around the alchemical processes of the physiological, psychological, as well as spiritual a blend or marriage, if you will, and that makes the pineal gland critical and essential in activating, and lest I forget, most importantly, love is critical and indispensable because it will not vibrate. Pineal gland will not vibrate at the proper rate and motion if we are in a fear-based modality. We, modality. we operate from two places, love and fear. And okay, absence I'm going to stop you there oh. because I did put the link, my blog. So I want people to go and listen to the yes. show that did the other night. But I do have a question for you, and I hope you'll join me on the 27th. The question is, <laughs> I don't want to answer what will September the 23rd bring to the planet? So we're going to revisit this on September the 27th. But I do ask that the listeners go and do some research about what's going to happen to this planet on September the 23rd. So we're finished <laughs> with this show. <laughs> and it's funny, everything. I was talking about before you came. So I'm going to send you the link to my blog and you can make your comments there. It'll also be on Creator Creatrix on Facebook. And thank you for joining me. Thank and you, I, Your Highness. I'm very peaceful at this point. We're we're full of love. Thank you. <laughs> Peace. I say. I say.